welcome back to class today we are going to continue from where we stopped on our previous class on civil 3d tutorial for beginners on our previous class we stopped at point extraction so we are going to continue from there the next thing we have on the list is spot height creation and that is how you can create spot height so for you to create spot height what you simply need to do is to have your data your data xyz which i already have on my screen here this is my data this was the data we were using on our previous class so after having your data, you must have created a surface and add the data into the surface, which we've done on our previous class. So when you check here now, we already have a surface. This was the surface we created the other time. All right, so now, since we already have that, the next thing is to create spot height. Now we are going to create spot height for uh, this data now. Now for me to do that, to engage you to that, what I'll simply do is to come to annotate and as soon as you click on annotate, you're going to come to this place that says add labels. All right, you bring your cursor to add labels. You click on the drop down arrow. So under the drop down arrow, you're going to click on surface. So this is surface here. Surface, under the surface, we have several options. We have add surface label, slope. We have spot elevation. We have spot elevation on grid. You can see contour contour multiple and like so we're going to be working with spot elevation on grid all right so you click on spot elevation on grid you can see it says create spot when i hold my cursor into that it shows create spot elevation labels on a specified grid overlay on a surface if you should check this now this one says create spot elevation labels at specified points on a surface that is you want to specify a point on some on a surface if you want to use this but if you want to use this at least you are specifying grid overlay on a surface so i will make use of the two and we're going to see the differences so uh let me make use of this at first spot elevation on grid and let's see how it's going to be let's see what we're going to have so i'll click on that all right if you can remember on our last class under the interpolation i told you i'm going to furthermore when we come to spot height and this is what we are doing now so just pay attention to what i'm going to do so uh, it says specify a grid base point all right so i'm going to be selecting here as my grid base point so this is my grid base point now under this place you can see grid rotations so i will use zero as my grid rotation i'll leave it at zero then i'll press enter now grid spacing for x and grid spacing for y so i will use 10 meter for my grid spacing grid spacing for y as well which is 10 then it says specify upper right locations this is my upper right location i will come to this place it says change the size of rotations of the grid grid squares i will click on no and we are going to low wait for it while it supply us the spot height values all right so these are the spot height creations you can see now this space that does not contains values before as contains values now we already have values inside this data inside this inside this data with the data that was supplied in we are able to generate spot height with the data that we have and this particular data now if i should if i want to edit this data all i'm simply going to do is to select one of the data now i'm going to right click and i'll click on edit label style so under this i'll click on this place here and here we go we have this content and likes you can change the test height if it's not good enough you can increase and if it's too bold, you can decrease. On, well, under this content, now you click on these three dots, and here we go. You can bold, you can select this, you select whatever you have here, and you click on this place format to change the test height of whatever you have. I'm going to use standing rumors, and you can as well change the color. And when you're done, you click on OK. 
you can see it has been removed. Then I'll click on apply and I'll click OK. OK. Now you can see now it has been removed from what we have before. And you can as well change the rotation as well. Now that aside, let me just delete everything we've done so far. Coming back and checking what we have under the label surface. Now let's check these spot elevations. You know we used the other one spot elevations or green before. So now we're going to select this, select the point. We should select the point. Now this is the point we want to select. You can see it's quite different from what we have before. Now I believe you can see this is quite different from what we did earlier on. Spot elevation on grid is quite different from spot elevation. This is going to let you to supply in your values directly as soon as you reference a point. So you can see the difference now and when you are done, you press enter. And if you want to edit as well, you will definitely do it just like the way I edited it the other time. And that is how to work with sports height creations. If you don't want to use the other method I use for interpolation. And that's fine. The next thing we have on the list is to create contour. And for me to create contour, you know, like I said earlier on, you must have created your surface and add your data points into it, which we've done. Now is to create contour. But before I start creating my contour, you must on your contour. You know, during the surface creation, I share with you on how to turn on your contour, how to turn it off through the globe visibility so and uh, that's what I'm, I'm going to be doing so i'll come to this surface i'll click on the plus sign beside the surface then we have this surface that we created surface one that's what we created so i'll select it and i'll right click and click on edit surface top all right so now you can see these are the contours we turned off the other time when we created surface so i'll turn it in order for me to create my contour and then i'll click on apply as well i will turn on my border so this border now I'll change the color to this default color that that was there earlier on so we have the major and minor contours now so and another thing i'll be sharing with you is under these contours here you click on contour interval so you scroll down here, under the contour interval, you select the contour interval that you have, the base elevations, the major interval, the minor interval and the major interval. Now uh, for the major and minor interval, whatever you use is very important for you to know. And under the contour smoothing, smoothing now, I'm going to click on the plus, uh, plus I come beside it and I'll click on I'll change this to true after changing it to true I'll increase this contour smoothly and I'll change this to spline curve all right and I'll click on apply now you can see now the contour has it has added more and then I'll click OK. So um, let me quickly turn off the points that we have on the data, the data point, so that we can work directly with our contours value. We can see it clearly. You know, I've put you through on how to turn this off during the import sections during the time I was showing you on how to import data so that is that so we've turned it off 
all right so the next thing for us to do is under this surface now you know we've turned on the contour now so you click on this surface that we created that we already have the data inside this you come to this place that says edit you right click on your edit mm -hmm. and you click on this smooth surface you click on smooth surface and you, you select this grid base then you come to this you come to this select output regions you click on these three dots all right if you come to this surface boundary now the surface border you select it and you click on what you click on surface all right so it's going to select automatically like that so under this grid spacing i'm going to be using the grid spacing of 10 as well as this now i'll use 10 for this as well Then I will come back to this place and then I will click OK. So now that we have this, the next thing for us to do is to come to this annotate. You click on annotate. And then you come to this add labels. You click on it. So under this surface now, you click on add surface label. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this label type now, you change this label type. To, you can see we have single contours and multiple contours. So I will be showing show you the two different difference between the two so starting with contour single i'll select contour single now under this major contour and minor contours you can see major contours label minor contours label you do the settings by coming to this icon press down arrow you click on it you click on this all right so uh you can see from here you can change the test height you can change the test height let me change the test height to three now you can see this is the test height for these contours and then when i will click on this content under this these three dots now you guys should click on these three dots these three dots you select this and you click on you select this and you click on format to come to format so you change this test height you can change it to any test type. this color now i'm going to change this color I'm going to change it to contour color and contour color is brown. Hope you know. So I will, I will select brown color. Then I'll click OK. So I'll click OK here as well. You can see now it has been changed to brown. So I'll click on apply and I'll click OK. So that has been set. You do same thing to the minor contours. You know the one we did was for this one for the major contours. Alright, so this one as well, you change to three, then you click on these three dots, select this, and you come to format, you change this to time new romance. Any test format I used to use, so you select the color. You have to use different color because you know we have major contours and minor contours, and it's not supposed to be the same color. So but you have to ensure you are using brown as well. But just that the color will be slightly different from each other. Then I'll click OK. So I'll click OK here and here again I'll click OK and apply. All right. Now I think we are good to go for single now. When I click on add now, when I click on add, so I'll just click here. It's going to what? It's going to display the contour contour values. You can see the contour values now. This is for single. You'll be the one to be selecting wherever places you want the contour to be displayed on the screen. And that's just the difference between the single contours and multiple contours. Now, working with multiple contours, when you click on multiple contours now, when you click on multiple contours, after doing the settings, I click on add. So you're going to see the difference of of the two now. If I should select this place here, and you see, it's going. You have to select it along the part of wherever you are selecting. It's going to what? It's going to pick the whole, give the whole contour lines values automatically and that has multiple so this that's why it's called multiple you can see everything is together compared to this single contour that we input one after the other and that's the difference and that is how to add contour intervals to your work on civil 3d and to show contour lines i believe by the time you sit down to practice both the tutorial one and the tutorial two that i've shared with you you'll be able to get it well and don't forget i'm going to drop the link for you to download the data that i used to carry out the exercise on my video descriptions all right 
And if you found this video helpful, do want to subscribe to my channel.